charging. It's what keeps EVs on the road. It's a critical part of our adoption of electric vehicles. But over the past few years, it has been a source of frustration for many EV owners. Fortunately, things have been changing. And in fact, there is a huge change on the horizon. And that's that every EV in the next few years will have a Tesla port. So let's quickly talk about the standards that are out there right now. This is CCS, also known as SAE standard J1772 CCS combo coupler. This is what is on, well, essentially every EV out there that doesn't have a Tesla badge on it. This is the standard right now. This, this is NAX or the North American charging standard, also known as the Tesla cable, but more importantly, the SAE standard J3400. This is the future of electric vehicle charging in the United States because over the next few years, every EV on the road is going to support this cable. So how did Tesla's proprietary port become a standard? Well, back in the spring of 2023, Ford surprised the world when it announced that in 2024, its electric vehicles would support the Tesla supercharging network. And more importantly, in the future, its EVs, currently it's Ford F-150 Lightning and the Mustang Mach-E that I'm driving right now, they would be outfitted with the NAX or North American charging standard or more colloquially known, the Tesla port. This caused huge ripples within the industry because it meant that this car would soon be able to charge where, well, where this car charges. And this car would eventually have the Tesla port. But again, it's important to note that it's no longer known as the Tesla port. It is the SAE standard J3400. It's an industry standard now. It's not just Tesla's. After the Ford announcement, SAE and stakeholders from all over the industry got together to make sure that J3400, also known as NAX, is standardized. That way, every automaker and charging company are on the same page while adopting the port and charging cable. So what does that mean for you? What does it mean for the future of charging? And more importantly, what does it mean for the current charging standard, CCS? Well, let's figure all of that out. But the first thing I want to tell you is do not panic. You shouldn't worry if your current EV is outfitted with a CCS port. CCS chargers are not going anywhere. Right now, there are approximately 3 million EVs on the road in the United States that support the standard. Plus, every EV that's being sold in the United States right now that doesn't have a Tesla badge on it is outfitted with CCS. So again, there's no need to worry about your current EV losing access to on-the-go charging in the future. You will have access to charging for a long, long time. In fact, expect all the major charging companies, Electrify America, EVgo, and ChargePoint to continue to support CCS for years and possibly decades to come. And why do we think that'll happen? Well, because of another little standard that never quite caught on in the United States, Chatamo. The Nissan LEAF used to be the best-selling EV in the world. It was eventually surpassed by the Tesla Model 3 way back in 2021. But because up until recently, the LEAF was only outfitted with a Chatamo port, charging station companies have continued to support that standard. In other words, if charging providers will continue to support Chatamo for the Nissan LEAF, then CCS support, it's going to be around for quite a long time. So why are all the automakers and the charging station suppliers switching over to NAX or J3400? Comes down to one thing, charging anxiety. For years, the Tesla supercharging network has been the bar by which all other charging networks have been judged. Meanwhile, the CCS charging infrastructure has had issues with reliability and spotty coverage. Those issues have likely hurt EV sales. Why buy a vehicle you can't reliably refuel? That's not great for automakers that have invested billions of dollars on the EV transition. Why spend all that money and then be held up by the charging infrastructure that's largely outside of their control? It isn't ideal. 
In November of 2022, Tesla announced that it would be opening up its proprietary charging system and renamed it the North American Charging Standard. Then in March of 2023, Ford announced that it would support the standard and that it would allow its vehicles to charge on the Tesla network in 2024. At that point, SAE got involved and it and its stakeholders created the J3400 standard. So the Tesla standard that we've known for years is now called the J3400 standard with a ton of stakeholders within the industry. So that in the future, all automakers and all charging companies would be working on the same playing field in order to implement charging much quicker. Most automakers have announced that they will add J3400 or NAX ports to their EVs in 2025. If you're curious about supercharging support, don't worry, most automakers have already said that their vehicles will work on Tesla's supercharger network. In fact, some automakers have said that they'll support superchargers before they install the NAX ports on their vehicle. In fact, one of those companies that is already doing that is Ford. Right now, if you have a Ford Mach-E or an F-115 Lightning, you can get one of these, which is a adapter. It's a it's a NAX to CCS adapter, and you can plug in the NAX plug here and then plug this directly into your vehicle and start charging at a Tesla supercharging station. Currently, the Ford Mach-E and F-150 Lightning can both charge at select Tesla superchargers with an adapter available from Ford. The Tesla superchargers even show up in Ford's Blue Oval charging network. Plus, there's plug-in charge support, so you just pull up and plug in, just like a Tesla. What's great is that in a few years, in addition to all the EVs supporting a NAX port, all the charging stations will also support NAX plugs. In fact, this charge point station right now, it already has the Tesla slash J3400 slash NAX plug. I can plug this into a Tesla right now, and let's say in two years, I have a brand new Mustang Mach-E that's outfitted with the NAX port. I'll be able to plug it into this charger. But there is a caveat when it comes to charging. It is not like refueling a gas vehicle. This rolling piece of electronics and this static piece of electronics, well, when you plug in the cable, they have to talk to one another. It's called a software handshake. And that software handshake, it has been a source of frustration for the entire industry. Since its inception, the Tesla supercharger network has only had to talk to Teslas. It was essentially a walled garden where any changes by the vehicle or charging station teams could be immediately vetted by the peers on the other team and rolled out. Other charging companies weren't so lucky and they've had to deal with the software of multiple vehicles from multiple companies. To help figure out what is going on, let's say at the charger perspective, we're here at ChargePoint with Rob Newton. Rob, thanks so much for uh, being here with me. So yeah, tell me. NACS, CCS, what does the transition mean for ChargePoint and for really for charging station providers? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the way we think about it essentially is that we want to be able to help charge any vehicle on the road. And so to do that, of course, you've got to support all these different standards. Uh, at the end of last year, we started supporting the NACS, the NAX connector. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see on this uh, Express 250, we've got both a NAX connector and a CCS connector. Uh, of course, in the future, we'd like to see a world where that'll actually work in a single parking space, but we're happy to have something like this, which can serve two different two different vehicle types, excuse me, at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And so I, I, there, there are people who are, well, NAX is coming. Should I buy an EV because the EVs now still have CCS? Should they be sure. concerned that CCS is going anywhere? Yeah. No, I, I really don't think so. I mean, there's tons of CCS vehicles on the road. I think, you know, Obviously, there will be more NAX vehicles coming based on where, where, the, where the OEMs have been trending, but CCS is not going anywhere. So I would encourage folks, if they're interested in getting an EV, choose it based on what you prefer, what the vehicle looks like, how it drives, et cetera, the same, the same way you choose uh, any other vehicle. Cool, cool. And, and you know, for ChargePoint, you know, as, let's say, right now, this Mustang has CCS, yeah. it has an adapter, but next year, it's supposed to have a NAS, NAS adapter, so they yeah. should be fine yeah, outside exactly. of the Tesla network. I think there's there's people still think that the NAX is only going to be available on Tesla for yeah. for for ChargePoint. That doesn't seem like it's, yeah, it's, no, I I think that's not the case. You know, like like all the different NAX vehicles that are going to be available, we'll be able to support those. And so as folks are, you know, again, like uh, as I mentioned before, like you know, our goal is to be able to charge any vehicle on the road with the yeah. connectors that are on our stations. So awesome, yeah, that's cool. Thanks so much, Rob. Thank you.
What's important is that everyone is on board. It has to be automakers, it has to be charging station providers, and all of the stakeholders within the standards bodies, they are all on board with NAX J3400. It means that both vehicle production and EV infrastructure will be streamlined as we move forward. But again, don't worry if you have an EV that has CCS. CCS will be supported for a very, very long time. And as soon as your EV is able to support NAX via an adapter, you might as well get the adapter because the future is NAX J3400. For more coverage of EVs, batteries, and charging stations, be sure to subscribe to SAE International.